Hello everybody. Today I'm going to explain how a square wave is formed from a bunch of sine waves. So let's understand what is a sine wave. A sine wave or a sinusoid is a mathematical curve that describes a smooth periodic oscillation. It is a continuous wave. The curve gradually goes up and down following a sine pattern. In contrast, a square wave is a non-sinusoidal periodic waveform in which the amplitude alternates at a steady frequency between fixed minimum and maximum values, and with the same duration at the maximum and minimum values. The transition between minimum and maximum is not, although it looks instantaneous, it's not instantaneous for real square waves. We'll learn more about this later in this video. Alright, so how square waves are formed? The square waves are formed when multiple sine waves are added together. This process is called additive synthesis. So in this process, sine waves can be added not only to generate square waves, but also to create triangle waves and sawtooth waves. But in this video, we're going to focus only on square waves. Alright, this is a spectrograph of a 500 Hz square wave. If it was a spectrograph of a 500 Hz sine wave, all you'd see a single line at 500 Hz. But since it's a spectrograph of a square wave, in addition to the fundamental frequency, you also observe lots of harmonics. But the most important thing here is the harmonics are odd harmonics, meaning the next peak here, you know, is is like 1500 hertz. You know, after 500, 500 times 3 is 1500, and then the next peak here is 2500 hertz, which is 500 times 5. So now, in order to generate a squared wave, when we have a bunch of sine waves, the trick is to, like, you know, take all the sine waves, which are the, you know, odd harmonics, and add them and keep adding them until you get your square wave. So we're going to reverse engineer and we're going to start adding all these sine waves of the odd harmonics to our original main, you know, first harmonic frequency. All right, this is a Fourier expression, and you know, as you can observe here, it represents the sum of all the frequencies right from the fundamentals. So, sine of omega t, that is the fundamental frequency, and the next one is the odd harmonic, which is in the third harmonic, one third times sine of three omega t. The next is the fifth harmonic, and so on. It keeps continuing, and you know, omega is the angular frequency, which is two pi f. F is the sound frequency or the frequency. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the first harmonic and then we're going to keep adding, you know, odd harmonics over and over again to this first harmonic. And we're going to gradually observe the sine pattern changed, you know, transform into a square wave gradually. And then after sufficient harmonics are added, it does look like a, you know, close enough square wave. All right, so this is the first harmonic, and as you can see here, the equation is sine of omega t, and I'm calling omega t as x. So it's a pure sine wave, pure tone or first harmonic. All right, so in this graph, as you can observe, we have the first harmonic, and in, in addition to the first harmonic, there is also the third harmonic as evidenced by the equation, sine x plus one third sine three x. And as you can observe, the pattern is gradually shifting, and it's no longer a sine wave, not a square wave either, but it's shifting toward becoming a square wave. So in this graph, in addition to the first and third harmonic, we also have the fifth harmonic. In this graph, we have the first, third, fifth, and the seventh harmonic. So the graph is gradually picking up a square wave shape. All right, so in this case, we have added many odd harmonics, you know, all the way from 3rd, 5th, 7th, all the way up to the 21st harmonic. And now we can say, you know, the graph has reached convergence almost, you know, in terms of replicating a square wave. Now, let's just compare it against an ideal square wave and, you know, make our conclusions. All right, so this graph is a comparison of real and ideal square wave. The blue color graph is the real square wave that we have you know obtained by adding sine waves you know all the odd harmonics from the fundamental first all the way up to the 21st and the black wave is an ideal square wave so as we can observe here the the blue square wave the approximated one is fairly tracing out the black square waves in almost every region and whatever the you know the, the spikes that you can see up at the top and the bottom, they will go away as you had even more harmonics. But overall, it's just doing a good job tracing out the ideal square wave. 
but there is a point where it doesn't trace out very accurately and that's the transition between the minimum and the maximum regions. If you observe closely, it's following a slant and it's not exactly, you know, tracing out the black wave. The black wave, which is an ideal wave, is, you know, is having an instantaneous transition. So it's, it's, a, it's a straight line. But that's an ideal case. In real case, you cannot have an instantaneous transition. It's, it's going to have a slant. You know, it might be small, but it's, it's still a slant. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, you know, you would require infinite bandwidth if you want to achieve, you know, a straight transition. And bandwidth is a difference between the upper and lower frequencies in a band of frequencies. And due to this limitation, you know, it is not possible to achieve a straight instantaneous transition. This is called the Gibbs phenomena. And so the transition is always, there's a slant. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, an asymptote. You're almost about to touch, but you'll never touch, or you'll touch only at infinity. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any doubts, questions, hit the comments, and I'll be sure to respond. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day.